humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up higher and higher, and he shall lift you up. to our worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share it with one another.
A dreadful thing that in some way have become a part of human life. Even in this amazingly wealthy nation, we can hunger for food or particular foods. We can hunger for compassion, love, companionship, touch, presence, physical or spiritual union. We can spend so much time of our life focused on the absence of that for which we hunger. We often are confused about what that even is. 
For what do you hunger? Jesus understands that hunger is a very foundational thing in our lives. That it can lead us to believe, look at the world as insufficient. Never enough. Never enough. Except Jesus offers us a totally different way of life in which there is always enough. Listen to our text. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they went to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord.
You know, for some of us, if one is good, 10 is better. Think of exactly what that might be for you, but it's often true. With great experiences or great foods or stuff. Now, of course, we know about women with 300 pairs of shoes and guys with five sport cars and a child with every Barbie or Transformer ever made. But those are kind of the exaggerated images, right? But, of course, we all know there are times when we have overeaten times we've stayed out in the sun at the beach too long or taken one too many rides on the roller coaster. Hunger is just for that one more experience. Marshall's note, at the end of World War II, social workers had all of these orphans who had been starving. And they didn't sleep at night. They tossed and they turned. But they found that when they took a slice of heavy bread and they handed it to each child at night and the child slipped it under the blankets, that the children slept well because they knew that they had food for the day to come. When we live with a sense of insufficiency like those children, we are afraid. At us. It makes us ill at ease. We're urged by our own bodies to consume because we need to survive. If we go back to Palestine of Jesus' day, in the countryside where he was preaching, they're mostly poor people. They lived hand to mouth. Most were forced to be day laborers. Others worked the soil, scratching out a bare existence. Others were in the lowest paid trades. They knew what physical hunger was about. They also experienced deeper hungers for respect, security for nationhood, for connection with God and trust in their leaders, not to mention freedom from the Roman occupation. And they hearken back to those biblical promises of God for a land and a heritage. But yet, they were insufficient in those days. God had not come back to fill the rebuilt temple the Greeks and Romans had occupied the country. Local rich folks exploited the poor. Times were indeed tough. So when Jesus feeds some people, what happens? Make him king. This guy is here for us. And they're rushing and pressing to make him king. And of course, that had been tried before and it result, would have resulted in heavy military persecution. So why did Jesus feed them? What was Jesus trying to communicate to those folks. Jesus was filled with a deep love that wants to fill the deep voids in our lives. He knew that the people were coming in search of something to fill many voids in their lives, not the least of which was actual hunger. God was demonstrating that God cared about their plight that God heard the slaves in Egypt, that God heard their plight in Palestine, that God hears our struggles daily. Now the simple food that Jesus used was what? A little peasant boy had a few loaves of bread and some dried fish why? Why was that part of this story? Could it be that God seeks us to step forward and join God in this work? To volunteer so that God can multiply provisions for all? Was God demonstrating that when it comes to divine grace and love, there is always enough if we step forward and offer our lives? To work with God. 
You know, in this city, there's dinner just about every day. There's breakfast every day. There is lunch almost every day. There are food shelves all over the city. Send you away if you've been to one. Thanks to the work of countless volunteers and a food bank and programs like SNAP and WIC, the churches and other organizations, you do not need to starve in this city. Although there are plenty of folks who experience lack of nourishment given what they are able to acquire to eat. You see, each of us can do something to carry out God's will. Each of us can do at the very simplest bringing in a few cans or dry goods to the food shelf or showing up and helping in the kitchen. But I sense that there is a deeper hunger here. Perhaps you do too. A hunger to belong, to be loved, to be valued, to have a purpose in our lives, to have freedom from anxiety, fear, and anger. So many people live with stress and PTSD. It's an epidemic among us. Failure of incomes to rise with expenses over the past 40 years is less more and more people worried about having enough to live on and in old age. As a nation, we are making fewer babies, maybe because we're not so sure about the future. What hungers do you have? In our context, what do you think Jesus is seeking to communicate to us about our hungers? How and why is Jesus seeking to feed us? Could it be that we're like those disciples caught in the boat in high winds and waves on the Sea of Galilee. We know that even today in Missouri there has been a tragedy with high winds on a small body of water. What is the storm today even if we're caught? When we're caught in storms, what do we yearn for? Because hunger and yearning are sort of two sides of the same coin. One has to do with physical things and the other with psychological, emotional, and spiritual things. And this is part of who we are through the world. We yearn for peace, for joy, belonging, and stability. And of course, we may reach for food, drink, drugs, power, sex, you name it. But ultimately, we find that our own real refreshment comes from the peace of Christ within us. Not just for those disciples on the boat, but today. Jesus' message is love. He comes to us in our prayers, our sleepless nights, our times of worry. He comes with assurance of divine presence and love. The challenge we face is ourselves to accept this presence as enough. Doesn't mean you don't have to go out and work. Doesn't mean life isn't going to be a struggle. But if we can accept that God is with us, it is enough. Founder of the Methodist movement, John Wesley, said in his dying breath, the best of it is God is always with us. Indeed, this is true, and Scripture affirms it again and again. So try, friends, to place your trust in Jesus, to calm your hearts and minds so that we can reach the shores on the other side of disaster. The more we do it, the more we will have memories to go back to of divine presence and help when we have been struggling. And those memories will carry us over the difficult times that we face in the future. You know well the serenity prayer. Good for all of us. That we can have the strength to do what we need to do and can do and the courage to live what we cannot change. And the wisdom to know the difference. 
But as those struggling with addiction know, we have to support one another. We have to walk with one another through the challenges, give encouragement, a shoulder to lean upon, a gentle counsel when it is sought. And this is how God grows the church as a community of love where we are all fed by Jesus. Amen. Let's pray to God. 
Dieu Père des grâces, omnipotent, omnicréant, nous te rendons grâce, nous te glorifions ce matin. Nous te disons grand merci pour la parole de vie. Merci puisque ta parole nous dit, tu es le bon restaurateur. Oh Seigneur Jésus, nous te glorifions, nous t'adorons. Tu es la manne cachée, tu as nourri ton peuple dans le désert. Et nous prions pour ceux qui souffrent de la faim. Tu es le bon restaurateur, ô oh, Seigneur. Celui qui vient à toi sera nourri. Merci pour tous ceux qui crient au nom de Jésus-Christ, puisqu'ils seront sauvés. Merci Seigneur, puisque tu es le lot de vie. Nous prions pour ceux qui souffrent dans les prisons. Nous, nous prions pour ceux qui souffrent dans les guerres permanentes. Nous prions pour l'Afrique. Tu es le Dieu qui ne change pas. Tu es le Dieu qui est le Dieu de grâce. Tu es le Dieu qui bénit. Tu es le Dieu qui change de situation. Tu es le Dieu qui agit. Tu es le Dieu qui répond. Oh Seigneur, qui peut agir comme toi qui peut sauver comme toi les bons restaurateurs? Que ta main protectrice s'élève au milieu de nous et nous sauve. Que ta main, Seigneur, nous bénisse. Que ta main nous fait des grâces. Oh Seigneur, bénis-nous tous. Pense pour ceux qui souffrent dans les nursing homes. Pense pour ceux qui souffrent dans les hôpitaux. Pense pour ceux qui crient dans les désastres. Tu es le bon Dieu. Tu sauves. Tu es le bon Dieu. Tu changes de situation. Tu es le bon Dieu. Tu es merveilleux. Ô oh Seigneur, sois élevé, sois glorifié, sois béni. Ton Saint Nom, tu es Saint, Saint, Saint le Seigneur de l'univers. Que tes jours-ci, les dimanches, nous t'élevons et nous disons grand merci. Au nom de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Amen. Twelve gates. 
streets to the city. Hallelujah. When I get to heaven, I'm gonna sing and shout. There ain't nobody up there who's gonna put me out. Cause there's a 12 gates to the city. Hallelujah. Oh, what a beautiful city. Oh, what a beautiful city. Oh, what a beautiful city. Twelve gates to the city. Hallelujah. us to this table, his table. He has promised always to be present to us in these simple foods, that in a special way he will touch us, he will be present to us, he will relieve us of those shames and blockages that keep us from experiencing his grace and love. So everyone is who seeks to be at peace with God and with neighbor is invited to this table. After our prayers together, you're invited to come forward and kneel or stand at the rail. If you need gluten-free, just ask me on my left, your right. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give a thanks to the Lord our God. Oh, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is all right, a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Lord, you formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for the day when justice would roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty all who are oppressed, and to announce that the time has come when you save your people, to heal the sick, he fed the hungry, he ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you have given birth to your church, delivering us from slavery to sin and death, and making with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave it thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave it thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, who out for you and for many, for forgiveness of sins. Do this as often you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. 
as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Who out to you, Holy Spirit, on us gather here, and on this gift on bread and wine, make them before the body and the blood of Christ, that we may before the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry of the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we first at a heavenly banquet, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The food of heaven for the people of God. Amen. The blood of forgiveness that all may live in freedom. Amen. things are ready. Please come forward.
Let us pray together. In the name of God, we give you thanks for this holy ministry in which you have given yourself to us. Grant we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit. We give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. How does God talk to people? Maybe boldly for some, sometimes through his word, and sometimes in whispers. The man whispered, God, speak to me, and a meadow lark sang. But the man didn't hear. So the man yelled, God, speak to me, and the thunder rolled across the sky. But the man did not listen. The man looked around and said, God, let me see you. And a star shined brightly, but the man did not see. And the man shouted, God, show me a miracle. And life was born, but the man did not notice. So the man cried out in despair, touch me, God, and let me know that you are here. Whereupon, God reached down and touched the man, but the man brushed the butterfly away and walked on. Now I'm going to ask you to hold that thought for a minute. At the end of August, we are holding what is known as a service learning camp here for three days, and it is a program to introduce it's for our children, but also to introduce children and families to this church. It is a program that was done very successfully starting, I believe, about three years ago in one of our North County churches that did not have church school. Through this learning camp and planned activities beyond that, they now have a very successful Sunday school. And they were kind enough to share the information and the curriculum with us. It will be three days at the end of August, um, 23rd, 24th, and Monday the 27th. It will run from 9 to 3 each day. And uh, there are, anyway, the planning team has been working very hard weekly under Brian Harrison's leadership. And um, different people have taken charge of the different areas and activities. And we're in pretty good shape that way. However, we need people just to be present, just to be, ex uh, just to be here and shepherd the children and just assist with the plans that have been made. You don't need any, no experience is necessary. We just need more adults or high school youth, if you have grandchildren that are looking for something to do at the tail end of summer, to assist with what, what is going to happen here. Because I feel that if we can do this, that it, it will open the door to what we are looking to happen here in our church, and that's to bring in more young families, et cetera. So, I guess I'm asking you to consider that maybe you could be a butterfly and a young child may notice and feel God's love during those three days. And besides, it's just plain fun. You can come and you can play. Thank you. Yes, very much. My friends, go forth. Filled with the Holy Spirit, with your eyes upon Jesus, I know the peace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Your d 